then take the sheet pan and the paper and flip it over. Now you don't want the ink or the pencil touching the chocolate. So you would draw your lines on here and then flip the paper over and tape it down. It's just like back in second grade when you had that green paper with the two lines and the dotted line. Same technique again. And you're going to be learning how to write all over again. Okay? So we're just going to move this up. And then I'm going to show you how you can take, you know you saw in the video, the gingerbread lady, she showed you how that Wilt makes their own triangles. Well, they're expensive. Okay? Here, all you have to do is take some parchment paper. All right? We're going to take, I have three sheets here. Oh, let's see, All right? And all I'm going to do is I'm going to cut my corners out of this. I'm going to show you how to do that. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take the parchment paper, and I'm going to fold this in half. Okay? Once I fold it in half, I'm going to take the back side of my paring knife, and I'm going to come all the way across the top here and seam that out. Then open it up, take my paring knife, come in here, and I'm going to neatly cut. I have them all cut. Now, to form my triangles, all I'm going to do is take my parchment, fold it again, again, crease. Crease is really hard, so I get a nice clean cut. Come up underneath. Go cut. And this is my, my triangle section. Okay? So there's a whole stack of them. I'm going to just finish this whole sheet up. Here's another set. Okay? And then here's my last set. I just fold it over. So. up on the meat and let the knife cut. If it starts ripping and tearing, I don't want that. I want nice clean edges, especially on this edge. Okay? So, now, to roll a cornet, you saw in the video the lady showed you that you can set it down, okay? And you can roll it over like this and then roll it up. I prefer holding it like this. Let me show you over my shoulder here. I prefer holding it like this. Everybody thinks that this is the point of the cornet. It is not. This is not the point. This is the, the top. The point is up here. You're going to create a point. So find the center. Hold it with your fingers. Come around. Form your cone. And then this is your pivot point up here. And everything rolls around in your hand like this. In the video she showed you use the stapler. Don't do that. That's a foreign object that could actually get a new product. Just take it, take this end, and you pull it over, and you end up with a cornet. Now, the word cornet comes from the French word cornet, or trumpet. That's where that term comes from. So, if you did it correctly, you'll end up with a nice point on the end. You don't need anything to hold it in place because this little piece of paper holds it in place. So, let's do one more here for you. Okay? Cut off side, it's to your right. Hold it up here like this, grab it, roll it under, and then here's your pivot point up here. You roll it around, and then all I do is I take my fingers and I go like this, kind of like money kick, like this. Go inside, because what that does is that pulls this really tight, and if you get it really, it should almost be sharp as a needle up there. And you take this end, you tuck it in, and you crease it, and it'll hold it in place. You fold it the same way if you, if you lefty. If you're lefty, it would be this way. You would fold it this way, and you would grab it this way. And you would roll this way. Okay? Mm -hmm. All right? We good? Everybody okay? All right. For Next sure. thing we're going to do. So we have our prepared sheet pan. Okay? The tools that you're going to need is, again, you're going to need a portable stove, a saw spot, water, stainless steel bowl, a wooden spoon. Wooden spoon because... Wood doesn't conduct heat and it doesn't create metal scratching and make the chocolate taste like metal. You're going to need chocolate, you're going to need oil, you're going to need your cornet, now you know how to roll one. You're going to need some scissors, okay? And obviously you need your paring knife as well, okay? Yardstick and pencil if you want to draw lines on this. All right, two, go ahead and start piping out chocolate. I want to go ahead and take my cornet and you see the crease here? I want that facing me. I'm going to take some of my chocolate, take some of my chocolate, and put, I'm going to put two spoonfuls in my cornet. And 
And the goal is, is to keep the chocolate on the inside, not on the outside, okay? So now, to fold this up, if I did my cornet right, notice there's no chocolate running out the bottom. It's nice and tight, that's what I want. Now, I'm gonna take my cornet, I'm gonna fold it in half. You see the seam here? The seam is gonna be facing me, right? For you, I'm gonna face it to you so that you have the same image on your camera. Now. We're gonna take this, fold this end over, fold this end over, and then, we want to roll away from the seat. If we roll towards the seat, look what happens. Okay? It'll unravel and the chocolate will spill out. If we roll towards it, it pulls it nice and tight. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to roll it up just like a tube of toothpaste. Right? And then you notice how this is my seam here, nice and tight. And this is how I hold it. I hold it in my hand like this, with my other hand holding for security. Not this hand resting or this hand here resting. This is up and away because you're going to be working on top of the cake. So you want to make sure that this is up. I shake when I write, but it doesn't translate into the cornet. Okay? Now, when I go to trim off the edge to open this up to start letting the chocolate fall, you always want to cut smaller, not bigger. If you cut too big, you got to start all over again. So I always like to just nip the end off a little bit and see where I'm at, okay? I need to go a little bit more. So you can always cut more, okay? And then you squeeze. You see how you get this nice screen coming out there at the corner? That's what you're looking for. When you start writing for the first time, we want you to get comfortable with the cornet in your hand. So the first thing I have students do is, is we learn how to draw a straight line trying to not get any breaks in it. Learning how to start and learning how to stop and trying to keep straight. The next thing is you want to make sure that you keep this real close together, as close as you can. Because if you can keep it close, that means you have control over it. Okay? Notice the cornet tip never touches the surface. In icing, you drag your tip with the icing. With chocolate, the tip never touches the surface. If you think about it is, think about the chocolate as a string that you're laying down on a surface. So I'm gonna give you the demo here. See the string? It's kind of laying down. And I'm about maybe a quarter to a half inch from that. Okay, so once you get that, then you start looking at how to get flow and consistency. And then as you build upon that and you get rhythm going, then you start working on orders. And there's in your pack that there's a whole slew of orders. So you work your way and you start doing orders, okay? To do letters, it's just like back in second grade and you're doing your letters again and you do your A and then your small A. So basically what you're doing is a sampler board. Like you wouldn't do in stitching, you do the same thing. Okay, and then you go through the entire alphabet. Once you've done that, then you can start joining these letters together. So start basic, then you start running, then you start full sprint, and then you start going into your letters, okay? Then, once you feel comfortable with it, then you start putting your letters together. You want to always keep your tip of your cornet clean. So we start writing. And the most popular word is happy. All right. When you do your letters, you want to try to keep them tall and skinny because you can get more on a cake if you keep them tall and skinny. I kind of like your instructor. Tall and skinny. <laughs> right. Now, when I finish this, I want to show you what I'm what I'm looking for. Okay. Now, what I'm looking for is a thing called a baseline, and I'm a little rusty here. I haven't haven't practiced over the summer, but what I'm looking for is I'm looking for a straight line here which is my baseline. Then I'm looking for another line in here. It goes right across here called my midline. OK? 
okay? It'd be like on that paper, that green paper, you've got this line, then you've got your midline, that has your little dash, and then you've got your top. Okay, so that's what you're looking for to get consistency. Always remember, when you do your letters, it's not A. It's A. Because you want to take and pull your letters this way, so that it goes this way. And because it goes this way, it'll fit on the K. Okay, so that's what you're looking at. And then, the longest word that we write, and for the most part, is congratulations. And this one I'll put a little bend on it. And it is congrat. You. They. And you gotta go back and lock your keys and dot your eyes. Okay? So that's kind of what you're looking for. You're looking for consistency. And then um, for the test, I'm gonna tell you I want three lines, I want three wavy lines, I want your alphabet, and then I want your like happy birthday, and then usually your name. So that way I know. And then that's usually your first test. And then you'll do it again. And then I'll give you a time frame. Um, I'll give you an hour to start the first one, and I'll give you a half an hour for the second one, and I'll give you 20 minutes, then I'll give you 15 minutes, I'm going to shrink the time down, but increase the quality, Then, got to be good, got to be fast, okay? Doesn't mean anything if it takes you all day to do one of these boards. I couldn't afford you, okay? Any questions that you have, this is kind of what a general setup is, okay? I can assure you that when you first start doing this, you probably will want to throw this through the wall um, because I, I know students say I make it look really easy. That's not my intention. My intention is to show you a skill that has nothing to do about me. Okay?